The purpose of this video is to walk through a document template for a version update project that the project manager on the version update project, the overall project manager can use as a template. This is not a mandate, uh, but it's an idea of a tracking sheet that can help keep things organized uh, and on track for the version update project. There's an article in the Help Center uh, that covers the entire, uh, the two paths. What I'm talking about is path number two, which is a standard version update uh, that typically has some more complexity to it, or it's a larger change. Uh, so there's risks associated with it with regards to any customization compatibility and client work associated with the version update. Uh, so you can be familiar with that article. There's links in here for the article. Uh, the suggestion that I have is a company or a project manager would want to build out uh, a document like this and use it as a template that can be used anytime there's a major publish. Uh, for version updates, you might always also use something for project publishes uh, related to this. Uh, but the general concept of the version update process that I'm going to refer to is there's stage one, which is preparation, uh, which involves cutting a sandbox site and a sandbox database and uh, SimCloud applying the version update, the standard core product version update to that, and then running through a battery of testing uh, and to make sure that uh, all of your customizations or any of your configurations, they're all compatible and you're not introducing breaking changes. The core team does do breaking changes, particularly on major version updates. Uh, so your customizations may not be compatible. Uh, they're not testing those customizations. So the preparation stage is doing things in a sandbox. And ultimately, there's an artifact that you're going to create, which is what we call a go live checklist. And that go live checklist is going to be used during stage three in the live rollout. Uh, there is a cutover period where you're going to have a brief outage on your site. And the go live checklist is where you're taking actions during the publish process uh, with regards to data and or any customization compatibility. So there's two bodies of work. They're explained here in this article called client work and compatibility work. The checklist of that work that has to happen at go live is the go live checklist. And the goal is in the preparation stage and the dry run stage, you can nail down this process to minimize the risk of problems during stage three. So the general concept is stage one, I'm doing preparation on a sandbox uh, and testing everything. I'm going through a battery of tests after the version update, working through punch listing any of the issues, doing the client identifying and then doing the client and compatibility work, tracking all that in the go live checklist because it's going to be used here. And then if you feel like the risks are too high or you want to further de-risk it, you can do, uh, choose to do stage two, which is doing another dry run. It's cutting another sandbox, uh, essentially, and walking through the entire process again and validating your go live checklist uh, to make sure everything works and all your tests check out. And then ultimately uh, in stage three, that's when you're doing the actual go live process. You're going to use that go live checklist. You're also going to use your testing checklists as well. So the testing checklists are used here to make sure everything's working properly here uh, in the dry run to again, validate everything's working properly. And in stage three, after the publish to make sure everything's working properly and you haven't introduced breaking changes. Uh, the goal is to find things beforehand in preparation, or if there's any introduced during the live publish, uh, to find them quickly uh, so to, to minimize the negative business impact. All of this is solution related responsibility. Uh, if you're not familiar with the 3PS framework, there's other articles on that also called the PPPS framework. Uh, but uh, this is uh, associated with SimCloud updating the core version. Uh, and then you um, uh, and, and then you validating your entire solution uh, to make sure all that's working. So uh, this tracking sheet, basically there's some intro stuff and related articles. Uh, the goal would be to keep a template going. This would be the responsibility of the lead operator or project manager uh, at any uh, given company that's running their solution. The need for deviating from our standard checklist increases significantly as you have more and more customization or the complexity level of your SimCloud solution goes up. Uh, and because it's deviating more and more from the SimCloud core uh, uh, product. Um, so there's more articles on that. I'm not going to cover those concepts here. Uh, this effectively what we've got 
is the first couple things you've got here uh, in the goal. There's some goals here that are listed in here of keeping the project organized, making sure nothing's getting lost or forgotten. That's the job of the project manager uh, is to make sure there's a clear goal. Uh, you have all the resources aligned. You have a plan for the project. And then as stuff comes up, you're addressing issues and turning that into action items uh, with accountability to get it done. Uh, so we recommend keeping an issues list. Uh, uh, that, that uh, are added with, with, with people uh, uh, addressed on who's the issue. This is going to be discussed and decided on and either resolved or turned into tasks during the discussion. The to-dos are task lists uh, that are action items that are being cl completed on the project. And then uh, the project plan is basically we have a default project plan that's based on the article that I just showed you that has action items uh, that you're walking through. You can use start and, and due dates if you want. You can get elaborate. You don't have to use this tracking sheet. If you're into Gantt charts and other uh, project tracking documents, feel free to use that. Uh, but the concept here is you need to have a plan that you're following that's going to give you a high chance of success for the outcome. Uh, and then you need to have a way to track and address issues and track other ad hoc to do's uh, that, that come up. You can incorporate those back into the project plan or use the to do's. There's also an article in the help center uh, on booking or uh, your next uh, project meeting and using a meeting to meeting cadence where you're basically using an agenda uh, that's recommended here on your meetings. Uh, uh, to basically mine for issues, decide what's important to discuss, discuss them, and turn those into to-dos uh, that are getting done. You're also validating the to-dos every meeting and the project plan to make sure things are on track. The artifacts that are key here are uh, there's two testing checklists here and then the go live checklist. I've already referenced the go live checklist. Um, this is the checklist that you're gradually building. Um, uh, one notable is we have an option to put stuff in here for SimCloud. If there's weird exceptions or things that are coming up related to the version update that are identified, SimCloud can drop tasks in here. Uh, and then uh, effectively, this client work is up to you as the client, your responsibility. This is work that needs to be done in CRM product content or settings workspace or in your ERP system uh, to make the new version update work. Uh, and, and have continuous operation with your site. On small version updates, there's typically little to none of this. On larger updates, there may be stuff related to new features that you have to make decisions on or setting changes that you need to make uh, to be compatible with the new version update. That's all called client work. Compatibility work is stuff that's related to your customizations. The SimCloud product team, again, is not testing our core product with your customizations. That's a solution related responsibility that has to happen uh, after the version update. We're providing a sandbox environment to do that in to try to insulate that and give you basically a preview to go test and validate. The key here is there has to be thorough testing done after the version update, which is where your testing checklists come into play. We have a default testing checklist. You're seeing you can expand these. Uh, the concept behind the testing checklist is you can add tasks anywhere that you want. And what we recommend is the lead operator and the project manager keep and expand and mature a thorough testing checklist. We recommend having two test tracks, a critical and a comprehensive. The, the, the critical test path is uh, uh, a basically a shorter test run that's getting the core things, typically uh, things related to product pricing and ordering and, and validating that those work uh, as you're going through stage one and the optional stage two uh, dry runs in the checklist. Um, if you have a larger version update or a more critical change, if you're using this for a project publish, uh, that's maybe customization or significant project work, that you're using a, a project sandbox for, uh, then it's recommended to do the comprehensive. But that's really a risk versus trade-off thing, and that's a business decision that can be made uh, by the program manager, the project manager, and the lead operator. Should we run the critical or comprehensive checklist? Uh, in either case, at the bare minimum, the critical checklist needs to be run at stage one, stage two to validate, and, and stage three after publish. Uh, and that's represented in the project plan. Uh, you'll see the, the, the test checklist uh, uh, that's represented there uh, and also uh, the go live checklist represented. So the checklist check, the, the test checklist is validating that the publish didn't break anything or finding stuff that it did break so it can be addressed. 
any data changes are logged in the go live checklist because you have to do them again when you publish uh, because of course uh, the sandbox has a separate database that's going to be thrown away uh, the other factor that's in here so the goal here is you would mature and expand out this te to testing checklist this is a base this is a basic starting checklist that has a bunch of core functionality in it uh, and it's got some spots where you can add uh, uh, custom functionality uh, as well. And you can add more lines to this, modify this. This is the responsibility of the lead operator and the project manager to maintain this. There's also notables here where we've identified is this in base package or an add-on bundle uh, or is it a customization that you would add those. Uh, you can also basically uh, use this status as is it a to-do or should I ignore it? There may be scenarios you want to ignore stuff uh, and then is it passed or failed? So the concept here, if you were just doing a critical um, I'll, I'll show you. I can expand all the rows if I was doing a critical, and then I could do a filter uh, to just show me the critical steps and run through this. Uh, a notable that you can do in this is because you're going to use this test checklist more than once, I would number it, and you can actually right click and duplicate this sheet. When you duplicate it, you could have a test 02, test 03 as you're going through the different stages or doing more dry runs. At the very least, you're going to do one in stage one, and you're going to do one again in stage three. This product test matrix is basically an extension to the test checklist. There's reference to this in here when you get into product uh, 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 testing and, and, and order testing. And if you have various different product footprints, like standalone versus parent-child products versus complex products like unit of measure or product configurators, you're going to want a testing scenario that is the least amount of testing you could do to get the broadest coverage of the different variations of products that you have. You also need to do that with users. So at the very least, you want to test anonymous users if you have a retail facing site, a logged in B2B user, and then uh, potentially a worker, uh, or excuse me, a worker that's impersonating a user. Uh, those are three different tests that you would want to run uh, and do the variations on SKUs. This, this document template is set up where you've got the different pages that you want to test products. You can list out what your expected results are and then decide if you want this, you can also add line items in. Again, lead operator and project manager would be responsible for blowing this out for your specific set of products and keeping this as a master template that could be reused over and over again uh, to improve your process rigor and the quality output uh, that's happening each time. You would repeat this, uh, so copy this section in for each product and repeat it uh, uh, down for each different product variation. And then the test matrix is you're going to test different users. Uh, if you have other user variations that have very customized groups uh, that I'm not going to get into user profiling, uh, it would probably be applicable to test some users in different groups or that have wildly different user profiling settings and also test variations in browsers and devices uh, to make sure that you haven't introduced issues. Uh, one other notable, this is an inventory sheet that can be used as a master sheet that would be kept up to date for customizations for reference. This will help you build the testing checklist uh, and is a good audit for all parties involved to understand what the customizations are and the impacted audience uh, and also uh, the techniques that were involved in the customization so you can know what was touched by it. This looks up all of the drop lists that are listed throughout the sheet ultimately are using using these different lookups uh, so you can modify these lookups for example the resource names you would modify this in your template uh, and then use it uh, moving forward uh, so this is uh, again not a mandate but it's a it's a template that can be used to help the project manager and lead operator uh, execute a version update or other projects uh, with a high degree of confidence that you can get consistent quality outcomes when you publish anytime you change your application there's risk associated with that change the more traffic you're getting or the more business critical your site is, the more critical it is that you blow out your testing checklist and product checklist and you follow the overall plan, particularly in version updates or anytime you're doing a publish. Uh, um, we're focused here on version updates of upgrading the SimCloud core and making your customizations compatible. But it could also apply if you're using a project sandbox for a large project or a set of customizations that you're doing. Uh, these same principles apply. The key thing here is making sure you have a checklist that you're maturing over time. If you're making mistakes, it should go back into the checklist as items so you won't repeat them in the 
the future. And you're using these two checklists for that. And then this checklist starts blank. And on each version update, depending on what's in the version update and what you find during testing, going through the project plan, you're expanding that go live checklist. Hopefully this helps and let us know if we can do anything to help you.